Matt Reliance. I'm the CEO of Recovery Systems. We're Singapore headquarters, and uh, we, we supply around 14 countries in the world. We're delighted to have the Float Sanctuary as, uh, as one of our leading wellness um, suppliers in, in New Zealand, which is originally where I'm from, of course. Uh, so there, there are three areas that we cover in our business. One is athlete recovery. The second is healthy aging. Those two go hand in hand quite often because as we as we uh, get older, we still want to be athletically involved as much as we can. Uh, healthy aging becomes uh, a necessary aspect as our body's recovery slows down, either because of aging or because of the training load, or perhaps through accident or illness. Uh, there, there may be some blockages there from uh, around recovery. The third aspect is chronic pain and long-term illness. So uh, some of the areas we're involved in here are, for example, management of diabetes conditions, lymphedema, DDT, uh, uh, stress management, uh, and cell and nerve regeneration. So a little bit of a snapshot of what we do. Today we wanted to uh, do a, a quick trip through compression through compression boots now um float sanctuary has both our product and normatech normatech's great brand i want to generically talk about compression and what it does i don't want to tell you how great we are uh or, although we we're pretty good um but i want to generically talk about what compression does so featured in the in the picture um uh, here we we have a few of our products including the pants uh, which I believe have been a, a firm favourite at the at the Float Sanctuary, Phil. Oh, look, there's no question. I think most people that try them, um, that's the one they go back to. And I think Kalani, uh, you quite uh, regularly I big use it. I use that one over here. Man. Yeah, prefer the recovery systems over the other ones. Yeah, cool. There's a few other things that we do. We have the ability to put two people on one machine, which is uh, great for teams, clubs, and families. We, we found that to be um, to resonate. In this case, in the picture, we've got legs on one side, uh, and we've got the shorts or the hip and glute cuffs on the other. So it could be one person using arms and legs. So a single single use, uh, but two areas being uh, being treated. All right, so suffice to say, a little bit of an intro to intermittent compression. So we're helping the body's natural process, the squeeze and release. So the squeeze phase or the elimination of the metabolic waste is just as important as the release phase because you imagine your body's delivering back fresh nutrients, growth hormone for repair, recovery, and ultimately for gain. So this is speeding up that process. So... Uh, looking at Kalani and your training load as an, Olymp as an Olympian or as an aspiring Olympian, you are chronically um, loading stimulus into your body uh, and hoping that there's enough recovery there for super compensation. Of course, you're being managed very well by your own interpretation of your body stress and so on. But what we're doing here with the compression is giving you, uh, helping him to get on top of your gains uh, to stay, hopefully stay injury free as well as you approach um, uh, key fights along the way to your Olympic journey. So it's quite different to a compression sock, by the way. Compression socks are static uh, and they produce a, a mild amount of pressure around 6 to 20 mmHg of pressure. They'll only actually work if you're moving because the soleus muscle acts as a pump. Uh, so versus the boots, of course, the boots are constantly pumping and releasing. So there's that blood volume movement, the metabolic waste out, and the delivery of fresh nutrients back. So let's look at five protocols. And I believe Kalani has a sixth for us a little later on. So I'm really excited to hear from a fighter's point of view how he could benefit in another way from using the boots. First of all, warm up. So the graph that we have here is a muscle oxygen sensor that's been placed on a, on a leg. So we see that after eight minutes of using the boots, the baseline for muscle oxygen, which is an indicator of how warmed up you are, is above what it would normally take uh, what it would normally take 30 to 40 minutes to get to. So you would imagine uh, 30 to 40 minutes of skipping 
versus eight minutes on the boots, Karani. Now, I know that footwork is very important in boxing. Uh, however, if you can biohack your warm-up to the point where you've got sufficient energy left for key parts of your training, and this could apply to a runner, triathlete, uh, or, or any sort, sort of sport, you're actually biohacking your warm-up by boosting your muscle oxygen um, uh, significantly before you get into your session. Naturally, you'll need to mobilize your joints. We don't want you know, to have any injuries due to um, joint mobility not being ready, but you're way ahead of the game. Uh, so we recommend only around 10 minutes on the boots for warm-up because beyond 10 to 15 minutes, your body will go into a different state. It'll go into a parasympathetic state and into rest and digest. So you don't really want to have that happen before a session. So 10, limiting warm-up to 10 minutes is good, which naturally leads us on to recovery. So training makes you worse, and it's only when you super, uh, uh, when you recover do you get the super compensation. So speeding up your blood flow is very important to that. One of the key elements that we influence is not only the circulatory side, but also the central nervous system. So we were really curious as a brand uh, to why people fall asleep when they're on the boots. So we got a brain scientist in to do some testing. So here's our brain scientist. Here's our boxer. This is Abdul Karim from Singapore. He's wearing uh, all sorts of apparatus on his head, on his earlobe, a respiratory rate around his, um, around his chest. Uh, he's got an anxiety sensor on his palm of his hands, SPO meter, measuring um, ox um, blood oxygen and also measuring heart rate. So yeah, the, the findings came back in 10 pages. I, I kindly asked the scientist, please summarize for us. He said, look, there's a massive calming of the delta, theta and alpha brain state. So your body's going into a parasympathetic state, which is a rest and digest state, which is... Uh, what we want the central nervous system to do, regardless of your sport, in order to promote healing, recovery, and gains. So some of the symbolic things that happen as a result of that are uh, stress levels drop. No surprises there. This particular graph comes off a whoop. Um, uh, you may be familiar, there's lots of different things in the market that can measure such things. So this is off a whoop, and the, the person tried the boots at this point here uh, and uh, their stress levels plummeted. Interestingly enough, we have three professional golfers in our ambassador team. And when they put the boots on, their stress levels drop significantly. The golf golfers seem to like using whoop because uh, it's measuring a bunch of different stuff that they like to tune into. And uh, so managing the central nervous system for any sport because you're in a hand-eye coordination sport, uh, Kalani, where timing's very important. Head movement is a lot. Yep, 100%. Otherwise, you're going to get clocked <laughs> uh, and rather than clock somebody. Um, so golfers also, they're in the reactionary sport where they're, they're reacting to what their brain's telling them. So having managing your stress levels are very important. So that is another benefit aside from the circulatory, circulatory benefit. We also see the most common word in our Google reviews is sleep and sleep improvement. And we all know that sleep and possibly nutrition are the number one and number two recovery elements. So anything you can do to influence those vis-a-vis -vis circulatory gains and everything I've just mentioned is very important and it will manifest itself in better sleep quality. Some pretty good numbers here for deep sleep and REM sleep, both very important, of course, in, in maximizing your gain. So it's really a rep representative of what you've done in order to get there um, and to, to your sleep process. We see a huge reduction in swelling as well. This varies from person to person. Um, our subject in the picture is um, is a lady uh, and not, not uncommon to lose between one and two centimeters of swelling uh, um, which is which I, I think you're going to talk about in a little while, Kalani. I'll give you a cue to, to tell us about that. Rehab's another. Now, um, 
Unfortunately, from time to time, we are going to get injured. Anything you can do to influence blood flow is important. So uh, um, increasing blood flow uh, um, is, is very helpful, particularly around soft tissue injuries. Because if you think of areas like your ankles, your knees, your hips, uh, areas that are on a low blood supply area uh, take a long time to heal because they're not getting a huge amount of blood. So if we can boost the blood flow into those areas, they've got a much better chance of recovering. Now, um, Phil, you've got a, another piece of equipment from us that does cold as well as compression. Um, how, yeah, we, yeah, please. Yeah, so literally, um, thank you for contacting us a couple of months ago when it was first launched, and we've actually been able to try it on a few people now, particularly with injuries around the joints. Yeah. Um, and, and the way we see it, actually, Kalani's used had a bit of a chronic um, ankle injury after an accident in the gym, so it helped in terms of getting the blood flow and things moving. And reduce and the coldness down to about five degrees reduces naturally the pain. Yeah. Um, or our sports doctor, who has also used it following an injury in a race, um, described it as the perfect non-pharmaceutical pain relief intervention um, and to actually allow all that to, to work. But very clearly, without the use of pharmaceuticals, which quite often have a bit of a uh, a negative downside in terms of um, you know. By byproducts of using too many many drugs. So uh, yeah, we've basically been trying that with a number of people with those uh, joint injuries and also um, rehabilitation after joint surgery. Um, and a lot of now orthopedic surgeons are using that. In fact, one of our staff members just recently had a keyhole hip operation and woke up literally frozen because they'd wrapped her in um, cryo compression garment around her hip to help uh, accelerate that recovery as soon as she's coming out of anaesthetic. Yeah. So that, we're pretty excited about being able to offer that here in New Plymouth. Yeah, 100%. So we, we've worked with uh, a lot of contact sports, including uh, we've supplied two Rugby World Cups. Uh, we have had, uh, in the past, we had a contract with New Zealand Rugby uh, and uh, various rugby around uh, around um, our part, well, I'm, I'm saying our part of the world, we're supplying globally. So the, the use of ice for trauma is, is unquestionable because you're controlling uh, internal bleeding as well as pain relief. Uh, I do find, uh, so, and that's great, it's great that you have that offering for everything you just mentioned. I do find there's a little bit of a misunderstanding in the athlete market where people are using ice for non-trauma. Uh, in in actual fact, and I'm, uh, I'm saying ice, not cold, um, not hot, hot and cold therapy, because they're different things. So using ice actually delays inflammation, and inflammation is the first phase of healing. So ideally, if there's no trauma, we do not want to prevent the inflammation from happening. We want to accelerate the elimination of the uh, inflammation uh, through, uh, for example, compression, the act of compression, but we don't want to delay it or uh, um, because by delaying it, we may actually undo a lot of the good we've done in the training stimulus. <laughs> um, yeah, it's interesting you say that, Mike, because our sports doctor, when talking to her about this, was exactly that, that, you know, the latest research coming out is that the ice treatment has a, has a, a positive but it can also have a negative effect in delaying the actual appropriate inflammation is an appropriate response for the body to start build, rebuilding again. And yeah. if you kill that inflammation too quickly, it actually inhibits the body's ability to rebuild and can actually be detrimental, particularly in um, to increasing strength levels. Yeah, in, indeed. Now, naturally, fighting sports, uh, ice may be entirely appropriate because the, the, if there's hematonas so um uh, so horses for courses is what i say so there's rehab the other is travel um <clears throat> so the moment you step on a plane and the cabin door closes the cabin pressure changes and in fact the spo levels drop whoops i've gone too far let me go back uh the spo levels drop to around 98 percent um, so I've got a I've got a picture of one gentleman on this slide that you might that you might recognise, Dougal Allen, uh, coast I, to I know Dougal, yep, yep, coast to coast. Uh, yep. Dougal is an ambassador of ours. Uh, Dougal has chronic swelling when he gets on a plane, 
which is ironic because he's you know one of the fittest guys on the planet. Uh, but he, actually, uh, Mike, really interestingly, Kalani had exactly the same yeah. problem. Really, yeah, yeah. It's not uncommon. In, in fact, when we were uh, we, we did a uh, session with um, Singapore swimming before Tokyo Olympics, we were supplying a lot of their their Olympic teams, uh, badminton swimming uh, right across the board. The swimmers did a session with us on getting the most out of the compression boots. So one of our protocols for them was to be for each athlete to be on the boots for 20 minutes every hour. And that was only a five hour flight, five and a half hours to Tokyo from Singapore. So here's the deal. You spent 12 years of your life training for an Olympics. You don't want to leave any stone unturned, including edema or a chronic swelling that you would suffer on a flight. Uh, just prior to to a key event, so it should be part of part of the protocol. Um, and Karani, with the product that you've got, the the Atom, that's kind of ideal for uh, for for flying because of its uh, portable nature. You can get up and walk around with it on, and um, of course, it's it's battery powered. So there was my five protocols for for the boots. Karani, you've got a sixth. I wonder, would you mind sharing with us? Yes, uh, so the weight cutting aspect, um, so using it for the weight cutting. So obviously when you're using these, the blood circulation is moving all up your body and it's going into that emphatic drainage of your body. So for me, you're using that before I maybe get into my sauna or where what training I'm doing it so that everything can be released better instead of all that inflammation coming up, holding and retaining everything to try keep that inflammation there to let the body recover. We're draining that all out so that by the end of it, we can deplete as much as we can so that we can get on weight quicker and safer in a way. Yeah, safer. And, and look, weight cuts must be brutal. Uh, uh, and uh, so anything that we can um, soften the blow of it, it it's got to be it's got to be um, goodness. Uh, so Any, think Anything that makes it quicker and easier is way better. Yeah, yeah. Thanks very much for sharing. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to thank you if you don't mind. I'm going to add that into our protocols as a Kalani tip. Hey, here we go. All right, here we go.